Hi, my name is Jill. Welcome to All Things Are Possible with God, because they are a program about the reality of God in human lives. Each episode will talk about a verse or a passage about God, and then a guest will tell their real life experience with that passage. And today my guest is my friend, uh, my dear and beautiful friend, Deborah Freeman King. Hi, Debbie. Oh, thanks, Jill. It's an honor to be here. I'm so glad you were willing to come, especially for my first one. Um, Today we're going to discuss Psalm 23, and then Debbie is going to tell us her real life experience with that psalm. Psalm 23 can be found in the Old Testament of the Bible, and it was written by King David. And before becoming a king, David worked as a shepherd out in the fields tending sheep, so he really understood the intense dedication of a shepherd to ensure the care and the protection, the safety of his sheep. And knowing all he knew about being a shepherd and how hard that is, he chose to refer to God in this psalm as his shepherd. Um, Psalm 23 tells us that God is always with us. Certainly, he's with us in situations related to death, which is one of people's greatest fears, the fear of death. And I think that's one of the reasons that this psalm has given thousands of people comfort over the centuries. Um, After the passing away of someone most beloved to me, I meditated on the verses of this psalm and it really, they really took me in or drew me up to a place of um, peace where I felt really cared about by God. So we're going to read Psalm 23, and then Debbie's going to tell us her real life experience, which is especially interesting to me because Debbie had this experience before she had ever heard of or read Psalm 23. So that's what makes her story um, especially fascinating to me. So I'm going to read the Psalm. Actually, first I'm going to pray. Um, God, please give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Please open the eyes of our heart to see the truth in this passage. So now I'm going to read it. Um, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now Debbie is going to tell us her personal experience with Psalm 23. So go ahead, Debbie. Oh, thank you, Jill. Yes, um, back in December of um, 1979, I had carbon monoxide poisoning. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was by accident, and uh, I was in the car, they estimate, about eight hours. And um, nobody lives past an hour with carbon monoxide poisoning, especially back then. My goodness. Yes. I didn't know that. And um, so my parents found me the next day, which was uh, December 23rd, and I was rushed to Marlboro Hospital and then to Mass General Hospital. At that point, I was unconscious in a coma and dying. Um, All of my my lungs were full, my uh, intestines were stopping. And on December 24th, uh, they called my family in to say goodbye to me. The day before Christmas. Yes, the day before Christmas. Sorry. Um, And they had to say goodbye because everything was shutting down. And they told them I was not going to make it through the night, that I would die um, in the evening. So they came in and said goodbye. And I 
lived out the 23rd Psalm. I was in this beautiful grassy field with wildflowers and um, Jesus sat right next to me. There were three rolling hills of uh, grass and flowers oh, in there. Goodness. And we sat and we talked. <laughs> and I saw my whole life, he sat right next to me, and I saw oh. my whole life flash right before us. And we would stop at certain points and talk about those. Mm. And I asked him some bad things, like why did some bad things happen to me? And he said to me, I allowed those to, to happen to draw you closer to me, but you ran the other way. Oh. And then um, I, he told me I had to make a decision if I was going to go with him or come back. And I asked him if I could just stay there for a little bit longer because the peace and the love was so unbelievable. Oh. You know, it's like the cup here, mm -hmm. but it was filled to the brim, but not only filled to the brim, it was overflowing, which you just read. Yeah. The, and it was of love being poured in me. I was the cup. And it wow. was overflowing, and it never stopped. So you could feel that in you? It, pouring in me wow. and overflowing the okay. love of God. And mm. at first, I grabbed a hold of it and just didn't want to let go. Mm. But I realized it was never going to stop. Oh. So I could just relax and sit there. And then, I don't know why, I was only 16 at the time, mm -hmm. but I picked the flowers and I could feel their heartbeat in my <gasps> hand. And I turned to Jesus and I said, they're alive. And he said, yes, everything is alive here. Everything lives here. Oh my goodness, and, Debbie. Um, so he asked me um, if I've made up my mind yet. And I thought, this is wonderful. I have no pain. I have no fear. I have no sadness. I feel love unbelievable. I have total acceptance here and joy. Wow. I'm going with you. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So good we choice. stood up and we walked over to a stream. And he stood up on a rock. So just backing up for a second, when we just read that about, you know, Psalm um, 23, that he leads me besides the quiet waters or still waters. Mm -hmm. So here I am right by those waters. He stands up on a rock and he becomes this bright, brilliant white light. Yet I can see the outline of his body and he reaches his hand out to me and I go this close I knew as soon as I touched his hand I was go I was gone you mean to heaven and yes. you wouldn't come back yes okay oh I, I wow. just knew mm. so I pulled back and I said I can't leave my friends and family like this I gotta go back and finish my life and he said to me are you sure you're going to be in a lot of pain? Mm. And I said, yes. And he said, very well. And I came to in Mass General Hospital where the doctors and the nurses are around me, and they were saying, Debbie, you um, had carbon monoxide poisoning. You're in Mass General Hospital. Mm. And I whispered, I saw God. Oh, to a nurse or doctors and oh, nurses that oh, were you around did? me. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. yeah. And so they said, that's the only way that you're alive oh. today. Nobody lives through carbon monoxide poisoning for eight, eight hours. hours. And so um, what they do for people that have carbon monoxide poisoning today 
is what they learned from me. Um, so really? they have the oxygen tank that they put people in and uh, give them that. And so they wrote me up in the medical journals as a miracle. They did? Yes, they did. Oh yep. my goodness. Yep. I didn't know any of that. Yes. And so wow. when I, you know, it was difficult walking through um, so what happened to you was inexplicable to yeah. anything oh. scientific. Yes, yeah. absolutely, okay. absolutely. And it was difficult because mm -hmm. you had to kind of learn everything and again. Um, but um, when I wanted to give up, there were times I wanted to give up because it was hard and it was painful, like he said, mm -hmm. like, like Jesus said to me. Mm -hmm. But um, I, someone would send me a uh, get well card that reminded me a lot like where I was. Oh. So it has the grassy field mm -hmm. and the wildflowers mm -hmm. and the water. And I felt like God was saying to me, I'm right here with you. It's going to be okay. Oh. The, and then someone along the way sent me a little plaque and it had the 23rd Psalm in it and I read that and I said oh, I live this I know every part I know about the grassy fields I know about the the waters the still waters I know what it's like to be in the shadow of the valley of death I know what that's like to have my life being presented before me and being judged. I know what that's like, having my head anointed with the oil oh, right. of his love and filling me through. And um, I know what that's like. So when I finally got home and I was able to write out what happened, I wrote this little, um, I, little poem type thing, and I just wanna read it to you because this really sums it up. Remember, this is a 16-year-old that's writing this that never had any religious background. I was told that we were a Christian and that we believe in Jesus, but we never went to church. I never opened a Bible. Mm. I never had any knowledge about God. But this is what I wrote. There's a place that so few get to see and come back and tell about. There's so many beautiful things to see. There isn't a place like that here. The beautiful water bubbling down the waterfall so gracefully into a pool of sparkling glitter. The field with wild flowers and grass roaming from one part to another. Three gracious mountains standing in the background being so proud to be a part of this beauty. As I sat around grasping the beauty, I told this beautiful man I met I never wanted to leave. I always dreamt of a place like this. I looked around feeling love like I never felt before. There's no feeling of hurt or pain, being afraid or sadness. It is unexplainable. There's no words in the English language to explain the beauty of this place. I had a long talk with a man with all types of qualities, gracefulness, and beauty. No matter how bad you are, if you honestly want to change and start all over again, he will be at your side. He will lead you through paths of righteousness. He will be your guiding light from heaven above. You will be reborn again. All you have to do is ask. How old were you when you when you had the experience and then wrote that? I was 16. I was and 16. had no religious upbringing, no spiritual no. background. No. That's amazing. And who did you think that person was that Jesus. you met? I, did you know that then? I did. And the interesting thing is, as we talked, 
um, not like we're talking, uh -huh. but as soon as a thought was thought, yeah. he would answer it, or we would talk that way versus oh, through the voice. Very it, interesting. Yeah. So, so whatever I was thinking um, was the communication mm -hmm. um, back and forth mm -hmm. from one another. So yes, I knew it was Jesus. Okay, wow. Yeah. So I came back, and um, obviously it changed my life. <laughs> Were you able to, when you, well, I want you to finish. Are you I finished? Am. Yes, I am. Um, when you came back, were you still able to speak with him? Or did you know that you could? Or do you remember? That's interesting that you said that. Um, nobody has asked me that oh. question. That's, that's actually excellent. Um, when I came back, I felt like, boy, I wanted to find out about God. And so we yeah. had this big, <laughs> yes. huge Bible, you know, this huge thing on the coffee table that was never opened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I opened it and started reading from the beginning oh. and, um, and then got to, you know, this one begot that one and I couldn't pronounce the names and I kind of shot it mm -hmm. and not knowing what to do. And then I went to a bunch of different churches um, trying to find, but it, it, nothing really, you know, clicked right away uh, for me. But I would, I know this sounds so crazy, but I would hear him audibly talk to me at times. Wow. Not all the time. And, and through the years, that got a lot quieter. I'll um, take some of that. But it was, he would... Um, you know, talk to me about things mm -hmm. or show me things that were about to happen. You know, I believe that when I was with Jesus that he took me outside of time and I saw my past, mm -hmm. which is what we went mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. my current situation at that time mm -hmm. that I had to make a decision on. Yep. I believe he showed me my future. I don't know what my future was, mm -hmm. and still don't. But um, but the reason I say that is that I was so adamant about coming back and yep. finishing my life. Oh, that there was a destiny, uh -huh. there was a purpose mm -hmm. for me to be here, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's why um, I chose to come back, finish my life regardless of the pain mm -hmm. or the suffering that I would be going through. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing, too, that he gave you that choice because I would assume he, he created the plan for your life to begin with, but then gave you the choice to come back and live it out or not. How, how when you came back, at such as a teenager, how was your perspective different about yourself, about other people, about your purpose, about death? Did you still have fear of death? You know, one of people's greatest fears. Mm -hmm. any, of the, any of those I'd like to know. Yes. Um, so fear of death, no. <laughs> I do not have fear of death at all. Um, it's like, That's great. It's <laughs> like... Um, because you you see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Oh you go from one place goodness. to to a whole new place. And if anyone ever said, you know, I don't know what happens on the other side, mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you there is something that happens on the other side. And the beauty of it, it's for all eternity. Yeah. So um, there is another side. There is a heaven as well as there's a hell. There is two different areas, mm. but there is a hope, you know, that mm -hmm. life, um, of what the future mm. of the life would be. Mm -hmm. And so I would say for me, um, f um, relationships mean a lot mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Family meant a lot. I know that they suffered immensely with Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Mm. knowing their own oldest oh, daughter died goodness. Uh, but came back to life you know so yes. there was a rejoicing in that yeah as well um so jesus showed you 
your life up until that time. So I guess my question is, as someone who hasn't had such an experience, how, I don't know if you have an answer for this, but is there ways that we as human beings on the earth can prepare better for being there? Do you know what I mean? Like, are there ways to prepare in any way? Oh, I think to, there for is. For being there or for to prepare for interacting with Jesus or being close to God? Oh, absolutely. Um, and this is what I found out uh, as I've uh, navigated through life, you know, mm -hmm, from 16 mm -hmm. on, that uh, the Word of God is truly a living And by the Word God. of God, you mean? The Bible. Oh, that okay, the, the Bible, Word of God. The I've actual heard, yes, Word that, of God okay. uh, is living, and it's active, and it uh, brings life. It restores my soul, which is part of this you mean Song. the words in there? The Reading words it? in here are life. So that's mm. one way of getting close to God and then recognizing uh, Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, just like I wrote here, um, I did, is no matter how bad I was, mm -hmm. I uh, honestly wanted to change and I called out on his name mm. and mm. i was reborn again i uh, my life has changed have i failed at times yes but majority of my life is walking toward god not away from god so if i'm someone sitting here and i really like you didn't i don't have any spiritual background and i want to get close to jesus and have him guide me do you have any suggestions of what i would say what I could say? Um, well, could we maybe go through like a prayer? Oh, yeah, I will. Right now? Yep. Okay. I do believe in Jesus, but I would definitely, he's yeah. my God, but I would like to hear that. Yeah, yeah and I'll yeah. do it with you. So I would say um, just talk to God mm -hmm. as your friend, as your best friend. Yeah. So, and you recognize this is God Almighty, the right. one that created the universe, right. the earth, that you're, is your best friend, okay? Yeah. And so um, I just say, you know, Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and things I've done wrong in my life. Forgive me of my sins and things I've done wrong in my life. Come into my life. Come into my life. Forgive me, forgive me, and lead me in and paths lead me closer to you. In paths closer to you. That is a great mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's just a great simple. one. Yeah, so we you can just to talk to him. You yes. don't have to get this formal thou art. No, because that just. <laughs> No. I don't want to call anybody that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just simple, yep. easy, your language, and he'll talk to you back in your language. Wow, I love that. What I really love is, like, for somebody that already believes, I like that you say you can pray for him to lead you in paths that bring you closer to him. Yes. You know? So if I'm about to go on some foolish, you know, look up some thing that isn't even going to matter later on, like some media thing, I can choose, I can ask him, is this what you want me to do right now? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll ask him to help me with everything. I, driving even, you yeah. know, protect me and protect those around me as we drive That's and get one. to our destiny and back. Um, I want, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but I've got to ask, did you see his face? Face? Like, do you know what he looks like? I can't help asking. Everybody asks me yeah. that. That's so funny. So I'm going to say that when he sat next to me, he looked like the pictures of Jesus. But when he became, when he stood on the rock, this is what really is uh, ingrained in my mind is that bright, brilliant white light around oh, his whole entire oh, body. Oh. I could tell this is his arm or his hand, yeah. but the white the, that just came off of that. Light? Light. Yeah. yeah. Light, white, yeah. white mm -hmm, light, mm -hmm. you know, wow. that came out. So that's the, that was more of the awe yeah. of God to yeah. me. Um, wow. Yeah. Did you look, could you look, did he look, you know how you said talking was more 
the thoughts, was I looking eye to eye or was that also something that wasn't as physical, the looking at? Well, because so we're sitting next to each other and we're looking at this beautiful field yep. and, and yeah, yeah, they yeah. talking. Yeah. And then, you know, you as you talk, you, you turn look, and yeah. look at each other yeah. and then you, you know, could keep oh. talking. So, yeah, we would look at each other in, in different things. Can but, you remember it now? Like, oh, if like it, it, yes. Oh. Like it just happened. Well, then that's, I had, That's why when I was sharing, uh, there were times I had to stop because I was about to cry yeah. because I was immediately yes. back in that, that um, moment. Well, Debbie, I can't Thank you enough for coming and sharing this, your beautiful, beautiful story oh, with God, you. with Jesus. I feel so honored to oh, be able to do this. Oh my goodness, it's, it's actually really helped me. It just makes it so real. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Um, anyway, that's all for now. God is real. If you don't know it, ask him to show you. And remember, all things are possible with God.